the screencast covers the discovery of the expansion of the universe and accompanying that what is known as Hubble's Law. And here's a photograph of the American astronomer Edwin Hubble in the 20th century. In the 20th century, Edwin Hubble discovers the true nature of galaxies and the scale of the universe. Early in his career, when he made these discoveries, Edwin Hubble worked at the Mount Wilson Observatory, which was just north of Pasadena at the summit of Mount Wilson. The observatory was built in the 1910s, and at the time it housed the largest telescope in the world. This was the largest telescope in the world for several decades. Okay, the telescope is actually called the Hooker Telescope. It's named after the engineer who designed it. It is still in use today. Today it is a National Historic Landmark. The primary mirror, which is down here at the base of the telescope, is 100 inches wide. It would be the largest telescope in the world for several decades. Okay, now Hubble made his discoveries with respect to galaxies by taking deep exposure photographs of what were at the time referred to as spiral nebulae. One of the great mysteries of astronomy in the early 20th century was what was the true nature of these spiral nebulae. The most prominent example at the time was known as the Andromeda Nebula. So using the Hooker Telescope, which is once again the most powerful telescope in the world at the time, Hubble took deep exposure photographs of that nebula. This right here is one of the key photographs that he took. He was able to resolve individual stars in the Andromeda Nebula. And then right here, it's highlighted, as you can see with his handwriting, he identified a specific type of star within this nebula called a Cepheid variable. It's kind of a long story, but Cepheid variables could be used to measure the distance from the Earth, for example, to the object in question, in this case, the Andromeda Nebula. What Hubble discovered is that this Cepheid variable inside of this nebula is more than two million light years away from the Earth. That is 20 times the distance that the Milky Way is wide. At the time, in the early 20th century, it was thought that the Milky Way was the entire universe. Other galaxies were unknown. Essentially, what Hubble has discovered here is a galaxy like our own that is more than 20 times the distance from us as the Milky Way is wide. So in making this discovery, basically Edwin Hubble recognizes the true nature of galaxies. The Milky Way is just a single galaxy among many, and then therefore the Andromeda Nebula is now known as the Andromeda Galaxy. It is our nearest big neighbor. It's a spiral galaxy similar to the Milky Way, and it's just over 2 million light years away. Certainly this discovery about other galaxies would be enough to make Edwin Hubble famous and one of the most important astronomers of the early 20th century. However, Hubble essentially goes one step further. With respect to external galaxies, basically Hubble measures about them two things. Number one is the distance from the Earth to those galaxies. He uses Cepheid variables to make those measurements. Those measurements are plotted down here on the horizontal axis of this graph. The distance is in terms of what is called megaparsecs. A megaparsec is a million parsecs. A parsec itself is 3.6 light years. And then the second measurement that Hubble makes is the galaxy's redshift. What Hubble discovered is that all of the galaxies, with the exception of a couple of, that are nearby, all of the galaxies are actually moving away from us. And you can make a measurement of the speed of the recession of that galaxy by using what is called a redshift. And then Hubble plots the recessional velocity here on the vertical axis of this graph as a function of distance here on the horizontal axis of this graph. And then lo and behold, what Hubble discovers is that this graph is a straight line. Now the slope of this line is a measurement of the rate of the expansion of the universe. For example, let's say for example that you have a galaxy that is some distance r away from us, and then you measure its speed as v. And then you look at another galaxy that is twice as far away from us, and lo and behold, its speed is 2v. This particular graph immediately implies that the universe is expanding, as was predicted earlier, by the Einstein field equation within general relativity. At this point, what I would like for you to do is pause this screencast and then take a look at the demonstration video of the expansion of the universe and what is known as Hubble's law that I've also, also have posted for you in today's folder. So go ahead and take a look at that demonstration video now.
Okay, now that you've seen that demonstration video, hopefully you've got a sense that essentially Hubble's law, the linear relationship of this graph, implies that the universe is expanding. It also implies that the universe itself has an evolutionary path. And here's how you can begin to understand that. The slope of this line is called Hubble's constant. It's basically a measurement of the rate of the expansion of the universe. Our best measurements to date, by the way, calculate the slope of this line as approximately 72 kilometers per second per megaparsec. In other words, if you move away from us at one megaparsec, you would find that the recessional velocity of galaxies is 72 kilometers per second. If you move twice as far away, it's twice that value, and so on and so on. At any rate, however, take the reciprocal of the slope of that line. When you take the reciprocal of the slope of that line, you end up with a time. That time is interpreted as the age of the universe, and our best measurements to date give us the slope of this line as a value of 72 kilometers per second per megaparsec. That corresponds to an age of the universe of about 13.8 billion years. So Hubble's law implies that the universe is expanding, as was originally predicted by the Einstein field equation in general relativity, and it also implies that the universe is of finite age. Okay, now throughout the 1920s, 30s, and so on into the 1990s, basically what galaxy studies were concerned with was measuring the slope of this line, the Hubble constant, with an ever-increasing degree of precision. The Hubble Space Telescope, in part, by the way, was designed to very precisely measure the slope of this line. The telescope was designed in the late 70s and in the 1980s, and it was launched in the early 1990s. Here's a nice photograph of the telescope. The telescope itself is still in use today. It will basically last as long as it can with respect to its instruments before they fail. And then eventually a successor to Hubble is being built and will be launched next year. Okay, now in addition to the universe expanding, as is once again implied by the slope of the line with respect to Hubble's law, it turns out that in the late 1990s, another discovery was made. It turns out that the rate of the expansion of the universe is actually accelerating. And then here's how you can get an understanding of that with this simple graph here, once again, describing Hubble's law. So if we take a look, for example, at a galaxy that is close to us, we then see it receding from us at some velocity. You take a look at another galaxy that's twice as far away, it's receding from us twice as fast, and so on, as I previously have described in this screencast. However, the further out that you look in space, the further back in time you're looking as well due to the finite speed of light. Notice that the slope of the line in the past is different than it is today. So in the past, for example, if you draw a line that is tangent to the curve like so at this position here, you would find that the slope of that line is less than it is today. What that means is that the universe is expanding at a rate that is faster today than it was in the past. So then therefore, some mysterious something is accelerating the rate of the expansion of the universe over time. We don't really understand what this something is, but we've given it a name. It's referred to as dark energy. So dark energy is just a name that's given to this mysterious force, whatever it is, that's causing the universe to expand at an ever-increasing accelerating rate. This discovery was made independently by two different teams of astronomers using different methods in the late 1990s. It led to the Nobel Prize in Physics that was awarded in the year 2012. So by measuring, for example, Hubble's constant early on in the 20th century, that gave us an understanding that the universe is expanding and it has a finite age. And then further measurements that were made in the late 20th century led to the discovery of dark energy the universe's rate of expansion is actually accelerating over time. The universe itself is primarily composed in terms of just its total amount of energy and mass and so on. It's primarily composed of dark energy. Almost 75% of the universe is dark energy. And then the remainder of the universe is mostly what is called dark matter. Dark matter is the subject of another screencast. And then only a small percentage of what is left over consists of ordinary atoms and ordinary matter that we see in galaxies, stars, planets, and so on. So today, here in the early 21st century, we think that we have a pretty good handle on overall the structure of the universe and its evolutionary path. 
But it turns out that we actually only are aware of about 5% of the entire universe, and then the remaining 95% of the universe consists of these mysterious somethings, dark energy, and also what is called dark matter.